Hi friends, welcome to Soulful Spinning, my channel on YouTube where I share my creative journey with the fiber arts. The name of the channel is Soulful Spinning because as we all know, crafting and making things with our hands is good for the soul. I hope this video finds you very well. I hope you're, you're doing okay this uh, beautiful autumn day here, coming to you right uh, from the Chicagoland area in the Midwest of the United States. And I welcome you to this place and uh, I'm excited to share with you some of the things I've been up to. It's been a couple of weeks since I posted a video. I usually post on Fridays. I've been trying to do every Friday for the last uh, wee while. And uh, so you can usually expect my videos to come up on Friday. If you wanna know when I do post, you can always hit that notification bell uh, to see when I've uploaded. Though I don't have my notifications on, I've turned them all off. So I totally understand <laughs> not wanting to turn those notifications on. So yes, how are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, we just got back from holiday, my husband and I and our son. Uh, we were in Southwest Michigan along the beautiful lake shore of Michigan. And we, we, we timed it perfectly. We arrived on a Thursday. It was a bit cloudy, slightly cool. But the rest of the week, the, we stayed a full seven days. The west, rest of the week was just absolutely beautiful. Uh, warm weather in the 70s, uh, Fahrenheit during the day, uh, sunshine. And uh, it was just so healing and lovely to you know go to Lake Michigan. It's just a huge... Uh, it's just so good for the soul to look out at the horizon and you can walk for miles. We didn't, <laughs> we felt like we did. <laughs> Our little cottage was right across the street from the lake shore. Uh, we did have to cross a sort of a, not a, a it, it was a two lane highway we had to pass. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible, there wasn't a lot of traffic, but there was a steep sandy hill going down and then of course going up uh, that's the challenge. So uh, we got a lot of good exercise for our legs during the course of the week. Um, my husband and I, uh, we basically, uh, and my son came too, we just uh, spent the day uh, in the morning, we'd go and take the dog for, the, for a walk. Yeah, what do you think of the water, Peaches? You like it? goof around and read and just relax and we had some fun we went to the um, we went to an apple orchard where we ate apple cider donuts and you know did all the autumnal autumnal things and it was it was great fun so that uh, was um, really a highlight I feel like it was really the end of summer I know it's it's been fall for a while but it was really the end of summer for me and uh, it's a little bittersweet coming back and um, we, we had a frost last night so I think the warm weather is uh, well and truly uh, done for a while.
So crafting wise, what have I been up to? I brought some spinning with me up, up to the cabin. Uh, it was a little cottage. I didn't really do a ton of spinning. Um, I did start spinning some wool that I've had in my stash for, I think, be two years this, um, this Christmas. I, I purchased this beautiful fiber from, from Inglenook Fibers. It was, I think it was not this last Christmas, but it was the Christmas before. And it was the uh, companion braids to this Advent. It wasn't an Advent, it was the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, unfortunately, Mother Macrina and the lovely ladies at the, 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 um, the convent there are not going to do the 12 days of Christmas this year in 2023, 2024. But I still have this that I have to spin up. So I just picked the lightest shade here. I think this one's called, this one's called Moonlight. So there's, it's all uh, organic pole worth. So there's Moonlight, uh, there's Raven. It's a beautiful, deep, deep blue, moody blue. There's Foxy Hill. I love this. Is this not perfect for this time of year here? If you're in the west, uh, if you're in the uh, northern hemisphere, so that's called Foxy Hill. And then this one's a variegated. Um, this is called Hill and Dale, uh, which is so so pretty. So in total, I have five ounces, and I'm going to spin this all on my uh, sort of medium-sized Turkish spindles. So this is one of my spindles from. Uh, Enid Ashcroft, uh, lovely maker out of the UK. And then I'm going to also use um, this one. This one's from Ian Tate. It's a beautiful spindle. Another one from Ian. This one here. So they're all about the same, the same size as my hand here. So they're not teeny tiny. And then one more from Enid. So yeah, this is a Enid Ashcroft. It's a British, uh, I guess it's a British spindle maker project. So I've got four Turkish spindles. I've got four braids of fiber, a little, each a little bit over an ounce. And I brought this with me because the Turkish spindles travel really well. There's no hook to worry about. And then you can take out the cross arms and just store them flat in the box. And, you know, you're not going to have any breakage or anything if you're careful. So, yes, today's Wednesday. So I'm going to post this on Friday the 13th. I'm not superstitious, so. Um, so between now and then, um, I will um, I will film a little bit of me spinning on uh, these Turkish spindles. Maybe I'll um, I'll revisit um, how I start spinning on a Turkish spindle and some of the techniques that I like to use. I I made a video some years ago about Turkish spindles. Uh, it was before I had any good sound equipment. I mean. I have a microphone, but still. Um, so maybe you would enjoy a, a little snippet of that, of me spinning this beautiful, beautiful fiber. So I'll insert that video right here, and then I'll be right back to talk about my knitting projects.
My tea is brewing in the kitchen. I practiced the piano already today. I did a little bit of knitting. I watched the Clue 2 uh, video. I think I can do it. I think I can adapt it to my square. So I thought I would um, do a little bit of Turkish spindle spinning now um, this afternoon. It's still Thursday uh, the 12th. So this was one, uh, one of the spindles I had already begun. Polworth is one of those beautiful breeds, uh, nice and soft, bouncy, uh, great for cuddly items, things next, next to skin, great for, great for sweaters, for baby knits. Um, yeah, it's just a really, really beautiful wool. So that's what I have here. I think I showed this to you in the other clip. So I've got all my yarn here, or my fiber. So I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, start another spindle and kind of revisit uh, Turkish spindles. So it's autumn now. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to start this br a little braid here. This is called, I think it's called Foxy Tail. Foxy. So this is, this is called Foxy. Is it pretty? Like a pumpkin-y. Well, it's Foxy. Foxy. So what spindle am I going to use? Let's see, so I have a couple of choices here. Uh, since I am spinning the, um, the blue on a in an Ashcroft, I think I'll go ahead and spin spin this one on one of my Ian uh, Tate IST spindles. So I don't remember what this wood is. Uh, I could probably look it up. But uh, so this is your Turkish spindle has two cross crossbars and then here's the shaft uh, mine's got, these have a little indentation here uh, so you can put your slip knot on there so what you do is these fit together perfectly and they have little he puts little brass weights at the end to give it some more centrifugal force in a longer spin time and then uh, it goes right here and you have your spindle uh, ready to go so you can actually use these as a support spindle. I don't, but you could. You could use it on a surface. But I have been um, using the support spindle technique when I start a new fiber. So I thought I would show that to you um, today. I hope you find it. Uh, maybe you'll find it useful and or interesting. But first, I'm going to go grab my cup of tea, and we'll be right back, and I'll show you how to get started on your Turkish spindle. So I have my, this is actually an English breakfast tea from Numi, I think. It's an organic blend. And I have my afternoon tea with plenty of milk and sugar to give me a little afternoon pickup. How about you? Are you a tea drinker? Uh, I like coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon, so... So while that cools off so I can actually drink it, I'll go ahead and get started on my uh, Turkish spindle and I'll change the angle so you can see my hands and what they're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this apart. This is a little over an ounce and this is a, called a braid. It's a commercial, uh, commercially prepared uh, comb top that is widely available to hand dyers. And so I open it up. So pretty. The color is just beautiful. And I don't know if you can see this, but you can see this, this delineation here. So I understand that when it comes off uh, the commercial equipment, it comes off in thin, uh, I think they call it sliver, which is long, thin tubes, uh, which some people call roving because they're long, thin strands of fiber. And you can see that you can split it. So what I usually do, I'll probably split this. I can see two splits here. I'm going to split it into three. Now it's all the same color, so I'm not worried about color management at all. But first I'll divide it up here. I think um, I'll do this into four strips. Yeah, I think I'll do four strips. So there's half. And then I'll start sort of in the middle and pull it apart and then just kind of carefully split the fiber.
just to give it manageable manageable lengths and then I'll I'll wind these up here I don't uh, this is nice and um, open it's not compacted the dyer um, Engel McFibers does a fabulous job with their dyeing. They, their wool doesn't get compacted at all. So all I'm going to do in the way of prep is to strip this down into four uh, strips here. So I like to keep my hands uh, kind of close together so uh, the strips stay even because uh, sometimes uh, you can get thinner and thinner strips. So I sort of keep it like that. Sometimes I hate breaking it apart. I just want to look at it in its original beauty, but you can't just sit there and do nothing. So, all right, so got that. And then there's this one. Now I could, I could split this up again. Uh, it just depends um, how you want to spin it. Um, yeah, you know what, for purposes here, I think I'll go ahead and split it again. Uh, it just you just don't want to, of course, split it thinner than you want to spin because then you can't. Depends on how thick you want to spin it. But I'll, I'll split it one yeah one more time, and that'll distribute the colors nicely. And I'll take so I guess this is an eighth. And look at that! I found a little, a uh, little piece of um, veg matter which is always nice because it reminds you that it came from an animal. <laughs> I think you're crooked here. Let me make you straight. Here you go. Yeah, so what I like to do to get my uh, Turkish spindle started is I start it like I do a support spindle. So I'll take an end to fluff up the end of one of my little nests here. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it against my shirt. I just happen to have this little bowl, but you know, you can do it right. Uh, you can do it right on your leg. You don't you don't need a surface to do it on. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stab the fiber uh, right at the tip and uh, draft out a little bit and wrap it on there. So. It's really unspun. It's just a little piece of uh, uh, piece of the roving, and then I'm going to spin, and I'm going to draft, spin, draft, spin, draft, spin. Hold the twist, draft it out. I'm going to pull it, push it down like I do with a, a support spindle, and I'm ready to go. You could see that you could continue on this way if you wanted and use your Turkish spindle as a support spindle. But I have plenty of leader here. A nice, I'm getting a nice uh, thin, a nice even singles here. And let me see what it looks like together. It's really pretty. That's what your two ply would look like. I have this little wraps per inch, gives me an idea. So the two together, it's about 14 wraps per inch, but what, what'll happen with Polworth is it'll puff up to probably 12 wraps per inch, which is your DK, which is my default. So that's kind of my default. All right, so I have a fair amount of fiber on the shaft here. So now I'm going to take it off. So here's my uh, third finger and my middle finger. I've just got my roving kind of tucked uh, out of the way uh, under my little finger. And then I'm going to do a, a figure eight with my spun wool. And now I know that the, the beginning is a little bit fuzzy, but I don't worry about that. But I am uh, kind of holding the twist so the twist doesn't all come out of my uh, spun yarn and get untwisted and it'll fall apart and then I have to start over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach this fiber to the bottom of the spindle. And uh, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Uh, there is a little indentation here so you can 
you could wrap it around that little indentation and then go from there. But what I usually do is I just uh, wrap it, wrapping it clockwise because that's how I'm going to spin it. I don't know if it really matters. And I'm wrapping it about four times so it's nice and secure. And then a uh, traditional way to wind your turtle, you'll get a little turtle on here, is to go over two of the bars and then under one of the bars. And then over two of the bars and under one. And over two and under one, over two, under one, and so forth and so on. And I'm leaving about, what's five inches here, five, six inches here of leader or my beginning yarn here. And I'm not letting the twist come out. And now I'm going to do a half hitch. So a half hitch is just a loop. So I've got it over my finger. It's just a loop right there at this little indentation. Uh, some Turkish spindles have hooks. I don't really care for the hook because I find it gets in the way. I, I, I prefer a little indentation and not a really big indentation either. And now I'm ready to go to do my spinning. I'm doing short forward. My spindle is still spinning. And I'm doing my figure eight, I'll, taking it off the tip with my thumb, and then going over two, under one, over two, under one, and so forth, and so on. And I'm on my way to spinning here. So you want to leave, uh, you know, you want to leave a fair, a little bit here. Here's my ruler. I'm leaving from the tip of my spindle. I'm leaving a good six inches there. Uh, to work with. And then again, I'm going to half hitch. And I give it a, a twirl. I give it a clockwise twirl. I'm spinning my yarn with a Z twist. So you think of what a Z looks like. A Z goes to the right when you start drawing it, or Z. Yeah, so I'm going to spin and then draft like so. I kind of do use both hands. You know, I'm pulling this way, but I'm also drawing out backwards. So I, I'm sort of doing a, uh, using both hands to, to, to draft out. And, you know, when it starts to slow down or when you feel like you have enough uh, fiber, but before it starts to do this, you don't want it to do that because that's going to unwrap, uh, untwist your yarn, and then it might fall. Again, flipping it off and going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So I've demonstrated this in other videos, but you may be new here. I think I did a, I did a Turkish spindle video many years ago when I first started the channel. So I thought I would. Um, see, I, this, I'm a little shy of leader here. It's got, I don't really have quite enough, so I'm going to undo a couple and then uh, twist it back on there. And, but look at that spin. Uh, I think he's one of my f absolute favorite makers. Uh, if you're in the UK, you probably could get one pretty easily. I know he does a lot of the shows, the fiber shows. But even if you're in the US, you can order one. It may take you a while uh, for it to arrive at your doorstep. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been really happy with all of my IST spindles. Uh, I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. I just am a fan. So yeah, so sometimes I don't, I leave a little bit too, uh, you know, there I'm only leaving about three inches, but I can still, I can still do my next um, make of yarn here. So yeah, so that's about it on how you do this. I've got a slub and a little, it's, it's a little bit loose, uh, under, under spun there, so I just put in my little bowl here, give it a little extra twist to make sure it's not going to fall apart. 
I always say if you're worried about dropping your spindle, just spin over a sofa or a bed or a soft carpet. And uh, even if you drop the spindle, it should be okay. So there we have our, and then I just keep going with this. So, yeah, so my, my strip of roving is about, it's about an inch thick. I don't like to go too thin because then you don't have anything to draft. And so I will be working on this. Um, Sometimes at the beginning of your spinning, this, these uh, crossbars tend to run up a little bit. I like to push it down, I make it nice and secure, and then once you have enough yarn on there, you don't have that problem. So I've got this one, and then the other one that I just start, I started on vacation but didn't get very far. We, we were having too much fun at the beach. Uh, but here's my other one. And... This is, it's getting a little bit heavy now. So sometimes when my uh, spindle starts to get a little heavy, I'll tend to spin thicker, and maybe that's time to start a new spindle. So this is what it looks like after you get some going here. So this is, this, people call this a turtle. Um, if you're careful and you don't lose the end, you can theoretically ply from the inside and the outside after you're done, but I've never had success doing that. My yarn always gets all tangled. So typically I will rewind the singles um, into a ball and then uh, ply it with another single from another cop. I, I don't really ply on my uh, Turkish spindles. I find it too slow and cumbersome. I usually ply, I usually ply on my wheel or one of my uh, larger top whirl spindles. But you know, it's just really experimentation. Just have fun, get yourself a spindle, have fun. There's no rules. You figure out what works for you and it's supposed to be a nice relaxing activity, so. Grant us peace. All right, so what have I been working on with my knitting? Well, longtime viewers <laughs> will know I have been plugging away at this sweater here. This is the Arboreal Sweater by Jennifer Steingass. And I have finished the two inches of uh, one by one rib on the bottom. I, I worked on this mainly uh, when we were away. So I've got the whole two inches knit up and I'm gonna go ahead and bind off and then uh, pick up for the sleeves. So this is made out of a hand spun. It's a hand spun uh, CVM. C, uh, CVM stands for California Variegated Mutant. 
and it is a um, American breed. It's also known as Rommeldale. Rommeldale uh, was the original breed. I think it was a Romney cross with a Merino or Rambouillet. I think it's Rambouillet and Romney. I'll, I'll put it here down below. If I, I can't rec recall off the top of my head. Um, but I bought this fleece some time ago and I spun it up into this two-ply woolen spun DK weight uh, yarn. And then the yoke is also, it was a gray fleece that I spun. So now I'm looking at this. I really need to finish this. So uh, that is on my needles still. Um, I have been working on a hand spun blanket project. This is just going to be a long-term whip. It's a mitered square blanket that I'm knitting out of a variety of different hand spun uh, yarns that I have in my stash. So I haven't, uh, I haven't made too much progress on this last time I showed you. I don't know if I showed you this one. This one's a singles yarn that I spun up. Um, I'm working on this one now uh, and I just see that I've lost, uh, I've lost the needles, but <laughs> Uh, no, no problem. This is a Shetland and I'm holding it with a strand of mohair that I just had some little leftovers here. I had a little leftover mohair uh, because I found this to be slightly thinner than the other yarns that I was working with. So yeah, not, not too much progress on that, but I will have to get this back. I'll have to have to get this back on the needles here. <laughs> I think I'm knitting this on a uh, US six, which is a four millimeter needle, and uh, most of the yarns are decayed worsted yarns. So I think um, I think I actually uh, might. I don't know. I might I might use some of this in the blanket. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. So there's that that I've been working on. Uh, of course, I have socks on the go. I haven't made a ton of progress on my current whips because I was sort of wrapped up in the uh, 2023 uh, Stephen West MCAL. I, uh, I got super excited and uh, had my yarn all wound up, and I, uh, I began that project. So that project has been sort of taking up all my knitting time. I can never keep up with uh, a mystery knit along. I, I tried a couple times and I mean, I just don't knit that fast and I just can't knit eight to 10 hours a day <laughs> to get to get the clues done. But uh, you know, I make, I, I start out with good intentions thinking I'm, I'm gonna be able to do that. Um, and alas, clue two is coming out tomorrow and I, I will not have clue one finished, but I'm still enjoying the process. I will show that to you in just a moment. Um, but yeah, this, these are um, some socks I've been working on. This is a, a basic two by two ribbed sock from Nancy Bush's Folk Sock Book. Um, I'm working them simultaneously and I'm working on the foot. And so those are, those are an ongoing project. I, I, I really need to finish these and my jumper because I, I think I could really use those. Uh, to items in my in my wardrobe, so I'm going to work on this uh, these two projects, these socks, that sweater, along with the mystery knit along. Working on my square. I have 200. Uh, I'm on another uh, increase round, 232. After this round, I'll have 240 and I need another 100 stitches. So that's quite a number of rounds because yeah, I do an increase every other round. I am, I am amazed and astonished that people can knit so fast. Um, I think I saw a, a post, I'm starting over my square and then 24 hours later, seriously, 24 hours later, she was done with her, <laughs> she, was, she was done with her square. I'm like, what the heck? I am not a fast knitter, but. All right. So 
my mystery knit along. Here is my progress so far. This uh, doesn't look exactly like clue one. Uh, clue one is, uh, starts at the center and, and radiates out in the gradient uh, selection that you have. Uh, I was having uh, trouble uh, getting the beginning started um, according to the instructions because uh, the make one, it's a circular cast on. And, you know, with the make ones and everything, I, for some reason I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And then one of my lovely viewers and Instagram friends, Mary, uh, messaged me and she says, well, can't you, can't you start like you do with your Berlin blanket squares? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so last January, January into March, basically all through the winter, I did a breed study and I, I think I bought a 12 or 13 pack of different breeds. And with every hand spun sample, I knitted a Berlin Blanket Square by Kate Davies. So I know this pattern pretty well. So I, that's what I decided to do. So if Mary, you're watching, thank you so much for the suggestion. Well, she, was, she had mentioned just the cast on, the Emily Oker's cast on. And, and I thought, well, why don't I start it with something that I know, I love, I know how to knit. And I find great comfort in making these little flowers. So yeah, I, uh, I'm happy with my progress so far. I have made some changes to the original kit that I purchased. So the original kit uh, had, uh, was from Stephen and Penelope and it was called the Lipstick Gradient. And I will show you the colors here in my, in my MCAL bag here, which I, very Art Deco, but then I realized it's a spaceship. <laughs> so, where are all my colors? Are these my colors? Let's see. Aha. So these were my original uh, four shades here. So, light to dark. This orange color is really neon, and it really, really pops uh, with the other colors. But as I was knitting the original uh, Clue 1, I, I think I began the original Clue 1 on Thursday evening of last week. I was so excited when I opened up the Clue because it didn't start with an eye cord cast on. I was like, woohoo, no, eye cord cast on. I was like so excited. Um, I did cast on and I was working away on the pattern all day, all day Friday into Friday evening. And I made, a, I made an error with my stitch count. And I, every time I tried to pick it up or fix it, I was like compounding the error. Have you ever done that? And it's always at 11 o'clock at night, right? And I just put it aside. And then as I looked at what I had completed, I had completed up to clue, uh, I think section four. So I was like halfway through. And I was looking at the colors and the stripes and all the ends that were on the back of the work. And then my husband says, are you really gonna wear that? <laughs> It doesn't matter. It's a Stephen West doll. I don't know. But I really felt like this color, this orange color, um, too much of a good thing, you know. So I, I took the, you know, the revised uh, Clue 1 and, you know, all the drama associated with the Clue, and I sort of sat with it for a while, and I looked at my yarn cabinet. I have a, I have a yarn cabinet over there. And I started looking at some of my other options. Now, I had had, I had pulled this coral color out, which is really pretty, as a potential uh, replacement. Uh, actually, it really looks pretty. <laughs> I probably should have went with this. Um, 
Uh, but then I started looking and it's, it's really, this coral is quite orange. So I looked in my cabinet and I found this yarn. I have, um, I have several hanks or skeins of this beautiful, beautiful wool. Actually, let me go get the label for you. Just, I'll be right back. Yeah, so I have this wool in my stash. It's from Renaissance Dyeing, and it's a four-ply uh, weight. I think it's a two-ply. It's, it's two plies, but it's four-ply or fingering weight. Uh, it's called Contessa, and it's a natural dye. There's, there's the label. Can you see the label there? It's a cochineal. And uh, it's a quite a woolly a wool. It has um, it has that real uh, robust. Uh, I don't, don't want to say rustic. It's not scratchy or anything like that, but it's just a really beautiful, uh, beautiful wool that sort of has my heart, you know, in the color and everything. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this as my color A. And I'm going to do the Berlin blanket square. And it was, it just flew, this little uh, motif in the middle just flew off my needles. Like I never say that because I'm never that fast. But it just, I love the, the stitch definition and how this embossed uh, leaf just sort of pops right out of, of the knitted fabric. And then I thought I, I actually was just going to chuck this one and maybe use it for a pair of socks or something. Uh, but then I ended up uh, thinking, well, you know what, I'm going to incorporate it as a, as a color opportunity, you know, so not have big expanses of this orange color, but maybe just have little, little pops, you know, just to kind of sparkle in the fabric. Uh, so what other change did I make? So the original red that came with the kit was this beautiful red here. It's called lipstick. And because I had changed the color A to this pink color, I went into my stash and I found this red. I know you probably can't tell much of a difference between these two, but this red is, I think it's called, it's Dream in Color Smushy, and it's called Red Rush. Here's the label. And it has these shades of pink in it. It's, it's a tonal. And this is a merino cashmere nylon, I think. Yes. Yes. Let's see, where is it? 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So that's what I've used here um, after the so I'm going to make sure I don't lose my stitches here. That's what I used because I really feel like it, it, it picks up some of the pink shades uh, from this woolly wool. So this woolly wool, this woolly wool is like my heart. It's, it's, it's just my love. I love a woolly wool. And I just had this inspiration to start my uh, geo gradient with my heart in a, in a wool that I love. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, kind of crazy colors. I've decided to, I'm doing four uh, garter ridges. I'm going from the pink out to this, this is called ox. And then I'm going to start again with the pink. And I don't know, I think I might just do uh, three of these orange stripes in the central panel. Uh, I haven't decided. I'm sort of be improvising and just sort of using my own creativity in this process uh, to create something that's very individual and very, very unique. So, I mean, my joy, my joy in the project is totally there. I, I just, and the knitting in the round is just, it's just very comforting. Um, so I'm using a different, as you can see, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with the pattern, but I'm using a different increase. I think Stephen has two stitches in here, and then uh, he does make one right, make one left. But I'm using this lace, uh, these yarn over uh, increases at the end. So, yeah, so what do you think? I, I like it. Uh, 
it reminds me, the fabric and the colors uh, remind me of K-Facet uh, fabric, um, which I actually have a, a book that came into my house recently, uh, K-Facet book that I want to share with you today from my bookshelf. And it really is sort of very inspirational and reminiscent of his, some of his color schemes and his florals. So I also found in my stash a couple of uh, alpacas that I thought I might incorporate. So I found this uh, fingering weight Surrey alpaca in my cabinet. And it's a beautiful pink shade. I wound up, it's 200 yards and about two ounces. And I thought I might incorporate this into my shawl. And then I also have this on the standby, which is a red, obviously red. This is a, I've got the tag right here. This is Andean Mist by Barocco. And it's a, um, a Surrey alpaca and silk. So I thought, wow, wouldn't that be... Wouldn't that be pretty to incorporate, you know, some mohair. I'm not, it's not mohair, it's alpaca into my shawl. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, excuse me, I was just checking my mic. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster, a little bit of ups and downs, but uh, I feel like it's going to be smooth sailing uh, from here on out. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I send good thoughts and love to all. So this is uh, from my bookshelf. It's not really a knitting, it's not a knitting book uh, per se, but it's related. This is, oh, K Facets Bold Blooms. He loves um, color. And I really feel like Stephen West is a genius just like Kay Facet, you know, in his use of color and in his creativity. Kay Facet's just such an inspiration and going strong at like 85 or 86. So, but just look, I mean, just looking at the cover, um, you can see how bold the colors are. He uses lots of, you know, who knew you could use pink and red and then, and then a pop of, of orange here in the corner so this book, oh, it's just, <laughs> you open it up and it's this beautiful orchid. Um, internationally renowned textile and fine artist Kay Facet has been inspired by flowers his entire life and has been incorporating them into his artwork for nearly as long. In bold blooms for the first time ever, he shares a behind the scenes look at his fascinating creative process shedding light on how he creates the vibrant fabrics, quilts, needlepoints, ribbons, floral displays, and paintings for which he is celebrated. So it's, an, it's basically an ode to flowers. He has this beautiful, beautiful photography. Um, he's got some, uh, there, he, he, uh, I guess he started out was a fine artist in California and then he's been living in the UK for decades, but he creates beautiful needlepoint works, which I really would like to get a kit someday and have my hand at. Uh, I actually have his glorious needlework book. I, I picked it up, used, doesn't have a dust cover or anything, but anywho, uh, in here he's got just wonderful, beautiful inspiration. So. Uh, bold bloom quilts and needlepoint. Uh, just a very, I, I look at this book more as an inspiration rather than as a how to, but here's a spread that particularly spoke to me. I mean, how beautiful is that? I mean, how can you not be happy looking at that? It's just so pretty. I mean, he just has, like this right here in particular. Just vibrating color. So it's just full of photographs. It does have, it has quilt patterns in here. This looks like a mitered square, a mitered square blanket. 
Yeah, just really beautiful. Uh, here is another one that I, I ta da uh, da tagged here. This is a needlepoint here. Oh, just beautiful, beautiful color. So yeah, the book is just full of inspiration and instruction at the back of the book. Here's Leafy Medallion, a quilt, blah, uh, a quilt that he's got in the back. A very um, simple, fairly simple piecing, but it's just the use of color. Um, he has the applique pattern in here. Um, here's hexagon, not, this not so easy, hexagon flowers, quilt, you know, just kind of a play on uh, grandma's quilt garden. That is just beautiful. You could uh, English paper piecing. But here's just like a round and round pattern. Yes, a book full of inspiration. This is the this is the seed packet quilt, which uh, I believe Kate at the last Homely House made. And so you can see how this um, this book's been at my bedside. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever do something specifically from here. I don't, I don't know if you have, I'd have to get a hold of the fabrics and so on. But it's just full of inspiration and joy, joy of color. Um, he does have some more, like, more subdued type pattern. Like, this one's a different color scheme. It's softer colors. Uh, he has a chapter in here about pastels in softer colors, um, but just the, the needle point is just eye-poppingly gorgeous. All right, so, well, you get the idea. Beautiful book, and I just love, I just love looking at the cover. <laughs> so that's from my bookshelf this week for, for inspiration. And again, I actually got that book from, I think I got it from used, a used book. I think it was, oh, Goodwill of Northern New England. I think I bought it through, I bought a used copy through one of the used bookstores, which I, I'm finding I really enjoy uh, purchasing books uh, that way. Uh, you get them in practically new condition, and you know, you're not supporting a huge conglomerate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited now about about this. Um, so yeah, so kind of Kay Facet inspired. I don't know where it's going. I don't even know where I'm going to go with this, um, but I know that I'm really really enjoying it. So yeah, that's about it. I, I oh uh, other things a couple a couple things. <laughs> Uh, okay. So what else I've been I've, I've been working I've been working on I have been uh, starting to prep my my wool I, I must be in a I must red <clears throat> everything I seem to be doing is shades of red but uh, I'm busy spinning up my uh, Coopworth uh, bamboo. Uh, roving that I picked up from uh, Psalm 23 Farm. I, I picked up uh, 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 eight ounces at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, and in my last video I showed how I received uh, a little, um, about 13 more ounces. So i am got my uh, Aura wheel right here. I'm spinning it into a thick singles yarn. Uh, I've spoken about this before in, in a previous episode, but if you're new here, I'll show you my yarn. So this are, these are my singles that I hand spun into a Let Lopey weight uh, singles. And this is my swatch. And I am going to cast on for the Felix cardigan. One of my viewers said, you know, I just start knitting and then I keep spinning. So she doesn't wait till she gets it all spun up. And I am kind of, I'm chomping at the bit to, uh, to get this cast on. 
uh, while I still have my motivation here. So that's uh, ongoing. What else? I did receive a new spindle in the mail. I'm a huge fan of um, the Spanish peacock. Uh, the maker's name is Mike. I don't know what his last name is. But I picked up another um, I picked up another support spindle. He had um, he had some stealth updates. <laughs> um, his, his spindles are in, in such high demand that when there's an update, it's, it's like, how can you, if you have a slow internet connection, like how do you, how do you buy one, right? <laughs> But he he was posting these just at random without any notification or anything. So if you kind of stalk his website, you can uh, sometimes pick up one of his spindles. Uh, this is a um, Cocobolo Whirl, the, one of his Tibetan spindles. Look how pretty that is. And then this is Diamond Wood. Uh, Diamond Wood, which is a manufactured, I think it's like a laminate, wood it's very very strong and I think it's going to hold the point here the spinning point very well uh, it's, there's no he doesn't use metal tips on his spindles but so lovely um, so I'm spinning up the rest of my Grecian Isles uh, bats from Inglenook Fibers so and I just have one tiny little bump left to spin. So, and then I have my yarn to ply up. So that was a new to me spindle. Yeah, I think that's about all I have to share with you today. I've been uh, I've been washing. I was washing uh, fleeces before, um, before I went on holiday. Uh, I have a Coradale, variegated Coradale that's been all dried, that I'm going to separate into uh, four shades from light to dark, and I will share that with you in another video. I've been experimenting with um, some mohair that was kindly sent to me. Uh, just check a couple videos prior to this one. Um, I have been taking these mohair uh, locks, they're kid mohair locks. Uh, beautiful, beautiful mohair. It's just blindingly beautiful. And I was using my mini combs to make some uh, comb top. And I'm spinning this up on a uh, another Spanish peacock. This is this bead whirl, which is really what I wanted. He's doing these bead whirls that are colored wood, like pink and purple and green. But of course, those are always gone. But, <laughs> but this is a bead whirl that I have from the Spanish Peacock. And I'm spinning this into a thin uh, lace weight single. And then I think I'm going to ply it with some wool. So this is, this is some thin wool that I have combed. And I'm spinning this. It's got a, it definitely has a halo. And I thought what I would do is experiment with a ply of fin, which is lustrous, long, staple, shiny wool. It's not considered long wool, um, but you can read up on fin. I'll, I'll leave a link about fin wool in the description. But I thought maybe I would ply the two together. So my friend told me that she, she plies goat with a strand of silk or um, which is the typical thing, the traditional thing to do with the Orenburg goat. Um, but I'm gonna do a little experimentation with that. That's another, um, another project that's uh, on the back burner. All right, so I think with that, I'll bid you a fond farewell and um, wish you well. I hope you have a great week. I will probably be back next Friday to give an update on my Westnitz Geogradient shawl and some of the other projects I've been working on. 
So uh, until then, take care, friends, and we'll talk to you very soon. So it's, it's Saturday. We're at the beach. Peaches is yanking my hand, so hopefully... I'll let her go for a second. I'm trying to keep the horizon straight. The, be the water is so calm today. It's beautiful. Very warm. It's uh, end of September. Walk along the beach here. Just really not a soul in sight except us and the you know who. Looking for crinoids and pretty rocks.